Here follows an extract from my book Artful Designs, available from Amazon. Chapter 21, Part 3 Maddox was waiting for James at Mossley Police Station, but they were soon driving to Beth's to make use of the better facilities there. As James drove, they caught up on each other's news. Not that either of them had much to report. Theo was in such a temper. But I did go with him to the gallery. He picked up some paperwork, a tie of his and a briefcase. I had a look inside the briefcase and I've made a list of everything he took home. His job interview letter and his passport were amongst the papers he took. I don't know if that's significant, said Maddox. Was there anything other than the paperwork, James asked. Maddox shook his head. Not many minutes later, they were seated at the familiar table in Beth's kitchen. Beth was pouring drinks and, after a summons from the silver service bell, Drew could be heard cleaning his brushes to come and join them. Beth, what have you got for us, said James. A ray of hope would be a good start. I have an idea. Will that do for starters, said Beth. Anything will do for starters. I can't afford to be picky. What are you thinking, said James. You know that I've been reading up on historical art theft, said Beth. I thought it might provide a pattern for our problem today. You were told that most art thefts aren't civilised and usually end up being quite base and are often brutal. Ours is no different as events have unfolded. I'd forgotten that, said Maddox. Because there was no fuss about the mag theft, I've been thinking that our case is out of the ordinary. That's not true though, is it? How awful! There has to be a pattern, continued Beth. We just have to find the right template. The most famous art theft of all time is the missing altar panel from Ghent Cathedral. In 1934, one of 12 panels went missing. Originally, two were taken as a ransom for money. One panel was returned, but the other, the righteous judges, has never been found. The story is littered with conspiracy and intrigue, and the investigation was either corrupt or inept. This artwork was highly prized, even Hitler desired it above all else. But the investigating commissioner only took a quick look at the case and instead of giving his attention to the loss of a famous piece of art, he went to look into a burglary in a nearby cheese shop instead. Another officer used the typewriter which was used for the ransom note before bothering to check it for fingerprints. It was a real fiasco. I hope you aren't insinuating malpractice here, said James. No, I'm just telling you what I read. A retired police officer, Mortier, had made it his life's work, but the panel is still missing to this day. If it's hidden away so successfully, maybe it can help us find our missing piece. It all sounds very thrilling. Do go on, said James. The original ransom note gave clues to the whereabouts of the panel, and on his deathbed, the organist of the cathedral... Goudertier told his lawyer about the note. It said the missing panel rested in a place where it couldn't be removed without raising suspicion. Later investigations suggest that it had been kept behind a panel in the organ loft where Goudertier played each week, but it had been discovered and moved many years before the investigators found that part of the trail. Beth continued. Goudertier told his wife that something misplaced could not be referred to as stolen and then hinted that, if it were down to him, he would restrict any searches to the vicinity of the cathedral. Mortier still receives clues to this day, hinting to the whereabouts of the missing panel. The cathedral walls have been x-rayed but the panel still hasn't been found. Nevertheless, popular opinion still suggests that it's hidden in plain sight. Theories now include the extended church community rather than the cathedral alone. The best place to hide a stolen car is in a car park, said Maddox. The principle is the same. Are you suggesting that the constable is still in the museum, asked Drew? If it isn't in a rubbish tip, which we have to accept as a possibility, and it hasn't been found in the usual channels for selling stolen art, then it has to be considered as a viable possibility. Posterity shows us that the best place to hide a picture is with other pictures, said Beth. But it's instantly recognisable, said Drew. It would stand out like a sore thumb. Not if it's hidden, said Beth. I'm not suggesting that it's overtly on show, 
but I do suspect that it's right under our noses if we have the wit to see it. It may be actually in the gallery, or it may be in the vicinity, as Godertier suggested. All sorts of possibilities sprang to mind, and options for searching the archives were discussed. I might be able to get a warrant to search the Whitworth, said James, but as far as in the vicinity goes, my hands are tied. I have to have compelling evidence before I can go nosing about people's private property. Just hang fire on any searches for now, said Beth. I have a few more ideas up my sleeve. I will need your official status when it comes to the last push, but we'll make sure we have a clearer idea before we charge in. With little more than a vague inkling of what further plans might entail, the meeting broke up, once each were allocated to their particular tasks. For the full book of Artful Designs, available in paperback or as an e-book, follow the link in the cards in the description box or find details on my website at SharonBill.com. Thanks for listening.